Hello and welcome to Coffee Lovers TV. On the show today, we're going to be having fun with the Breville Barista Touch. This is probably going to be a little bit of a longer video. What I'll do is make different sections and put them below in uh, the notes below so you can jump around if you'd like to. What I'm going to do first is kind of go over some broad details about the machine and then I'm going to make some coffee straight away with it like it's right out of the box, like you're just using it every single day. And then I'm gonna show you some of the more advanced things you can do with it. Uh, so if you wanna skip around to those sections, check below. So the Breville Barista Touch is a single boiler espresso machine with a built-in grinder. Honestly, ever since I've gotten this, I've been super impressed. Uh, it's really, really easy to make a really good quality espresso without really knowing at all what you're doing. And some of the broader details, like I said, this is a single boiler machine. That means that you're going to be pulling shots of espresso and steaming milk separately. And one of the things that makes this machine so impressive is the heating system heats the water super fast, so it doesn't take long at all to start up, pull a shot, and steam your milk. So I honestly, in all, all the time that I've used this, and I've been using this for about three months now, I haven't once thought that I needed a, a, a second boiler. Uh, advantages of, of machines with two boilers is you can pull your shot and steam your milk at the same time. That's about it. Uh, can't do that here, but also you don't really need to. Aside from heating the water really fast, uh, it is very uh, precise from a temperature perspective. So I've been able to pull very excellent shots of many different coffees on this machine. I've experimented around a lot. Um, and actually, and actually, Jesse and I on an episode of Coffee Lovers Radio played around with this machine and we were able to tweak everything without taking too much time. And we were pulling shots that were on par with everything he does in the shop. So uh, very, very impressive machine. Uh, so of course, it has the built-in grinder. The one thing I can't show you here is that this hopper is easily removable. I'm gonna be making a separate video on cleaning the machine. So if you wanna see um, some of the other parts taken apart, like in the cleaning, I'll be taking this apart and cleaning the grinder aspect of the, of the machine. So if you wanna see that uh, when I get that video up, I'll link to it below as well, uh, but that won't be up for a little bit of time. Now, like I said, I've been using this machine for three months and I, I haven't felt the need to really clean it in depth yet. Although I should clarify, I don't use it every single day. I have used it quite a bit, especially to make just espresso and Americano. Uh, if you follow my other videos, you know I don't make milk drinks a whole lot. But now that I have this, uh, I have been doing it a bit more because the milk steaming on here is ridiculously simple. We will get to that before too long. Uh, so of course you got the portafilter. This thing comes, the, the machine comes with several different baskets. Uh, the one I have in here, I'm trying to do this over glass without breaking anything. All right. The basket I have in here is intended for double shots of fresh ground coffee. They have three other baskets, two are sized for single shots. One set is for fresh ground coffee, the other is for pre-ground. I have to note here, I honestly don't know why that matters. Um, but since I'm using fresh ground coffee and pretty much anyone who's using this machine is going to be doing that because it has a built-in grinder, this is pretty much always the basket you're going to be using. This pretty much pretty easily cleans just by wiping it down uh, after, after brewing. Uh, although I do find giving it a rinse and a wipe down is good. Occasionally you'll want to wash it. There are a couple nooks and crannies in here. I actually haven't taken this part out yet, but it looks like you can remove it, um, which kind of makes sense. So that's your portafilter. Uh, it's hefty, really hefty. Be careful. I actually, uh, Jesse over at Condor Coffee gave me some accessories to use in addition. So I have a tamp mat here that I can press down on, which is quite nice. Uh, of course the tamper, so the tamper is actually right over here. It actually sits in its little spot um, with a magnet. So it just magnetizes right up in there. Um, pull it out. This tamper works fine. The only thing that, that I find bothersome about it is it's kind of small. Um, and we'll see this when I make a coffee with it. But A, it's small in general, and B, this is really small top, so pushing down on it is not terribly comfortable. Um, it's actually uh, easy to put a lot of excess pressure on your wrist tamping, 
coffee, which gives me a whole new perspective on baristas doing hundreds of these a day. Um, so let's pour a filter. Uh, it can sit right there. Usually when I'm not brewing, I actually sit it here just to get it out of the way, but it can sit in this little um, seat for the grinder. There's a drip tray, which I had emptied, but just recently filled again. Uh, so I can't pull this out and show you because there's some water in it. This actually holds quite a bit of, of liquid um, and is, is really easy to clean. Uh, these two parts here come off. And then you can just wash it. Uh, be noted that these parts should not go in the dishwasher, so you only need to hand wash them, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then one other thing, since I have the drip tray here, uh, see if I can pull it out. There's a basket in the back that's sometimes a little challenging to get a hold of. It's supposed to hook onto the drip tray, but it doesn't always behave. Um, so there's a basket that sits in the back here that can have tools and such for the machine. Uh, so some of this is cleaning stuff, some of it's maintenance. Uh, I haven't needed to use any of it yet, but that stuff just kind of stores neatly out of sight. Okay, get the drip tray back in place here. All right, got a little space to store some things on the top here. I usually keep um, just a couple tools. Although I usually store this the way I have this out. This is just a brush that can help um, with cleaning and stuff. I find it helpful if I need to quickly clean out the grinder. This is their razor trimming tool, which I'll get to when I get to pulling a shot of coffee. And then I usually keep a rag up here. Because uh, the one thing that's really important when pulling shots of coffee is keeping the machine as clean as possible for everyday use. Um, you'll always want to be cleaning the uh, shower screen here after every use, just a quick clean. And it usually requires wiping off excess grounds and such. So I usually keep a rag here for those purposes. Okay, and then the water tank. Uh, so the water tank on this machine is super easy to use. I can't turn the machine and show this to you because of my setup here, but um, there's a little handle on the top. Then the water tank just slips into some grooves in the back. You can kind of see that on the tank here. It has a built-in filter, uh, but it should be noted that it's a wise idea to add filtered water anyways. The extra filter in here will just help keep the machine itself as clean as possible. So I put filtered water into here, and then of course there is the filter in there as well. Um, using the most proper water for this uh, is a good idea. Uh, and so this just, this just pulls out and slips right in. I found that uh, filled to the max, if you're making a drink a day, then you'll probably have to refill this once a week or so. Unless you, unless you have a spot where um, you have some difficult, difficulty placing the machine in a place where it's easy to lift this out of the back, um, then that might become a little bit of a pain. Okay, so that's the machine. Uh, I will say that during the setup process, and right before making this video, I actually factory reset the machine so that I could go through the setup process again. Um, so there are a couple things that I noted. It'll ask you to test the water hardness of your water. And I should have saved the little strip, but they, you get a little strip for doing that with the machine. They will give you some notes about uh, the importance of the cleanliness of your water, the hardness of your water, and the filter in here. And they'll actually track on the machine uh, when you install the filter and they'll remind you when it's time to replace through here. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the other thing that I thought was that I should note on here about the setup process, and actually their setup process is really nice, it takes you through the whole thing. Uh, it'll do a purge. So you add water and it'll purge. I, th I think it was purging the group head and there's a spout under here that is for just straight hot water. And I think it purged the steam wand as well. That was made a huge mess. So the reason I say I think is because as soon as it started, water was splashing everywhere and I just put a couple of towels over it so that I could keep that from getting everywhere. So that's not like normal use, that's just during the setup. So the first time you get this uh, and you're doing the water purge, be careful, it's gonna spray water everywhere. Not too, not too much you can do about that except just cover it with a towel. But again, that's not 
gonna be something that's usual. What you might also do is maybe, maybe I should have used the milk pitcher to catch some of the water. Maybe that would have helped. A lot of the mess was, uh, like I said, there's a water spout here for hot water uh, and it shoots down into where the cup would be. The idea is that's for making like an Americano. Just a little tidbit about the setup. Uh, another nice thing, which unfortunately I can't show you because I've gone through it, is at the end of the setup, they take you through making a coffee. So I'm gonna do that now anyway, so that's all right, but I just wanted to note that their, their setup process, their getting started process on here, uh, I think is really well done. It explains everything you need to do to make a cup of coffee and as well things you can adjust going along the way. So now that I said that, let's just go ahead and get into making a coffee. So the coffee that I'm using here uh, that I have in here right now is Conduit Coffee's Loco Focus Espresso Blend. Uh, it's a really good sort of all around espresso. It's got enough sweetness and body that it pairs really well with milk, but it's got some nice brightness too. Uh, so it's really nice on its own. It's a good middle of the road coffee. Something I think should be noted is when you're picking coffees for espresso, if you go on the light end of the spectrum, light roasted coffees, especially really citrusy, fruity, bright tasting coffees, a lot of the acids in those coffees don't pair well with milk. So think before you get a coffee for your machine or when you do, I mean, you can experiment with this and, and change things up, but keep in mind what kind of coffee you wanna make. If you're making a lot of espressos and Americanos, then light roasted coffees, uh, you're gonna have a fun time brewing with those on here. This machine makes really fantastic espresso with light roasted coffees. Does really re great job with dark roasted coffees as well. Um, those might be more suited for milk-based drinks. Uh, while we're on the subject of exploring coffees, really quick, this, this machine setup can be a little bit challenging uh, if you are changing up coffees all the time. And we're gonna see this in a second when I get into making an espresso. There are two main settings for the grinder. There's the amount of time that it grinds for, and then there's the um, sort of detailed grinder setting. Uh, as far as that goes, like the grind size, there's a wheel on the side here, and I have it kind of set in the middle. I think this is about maybe where you get it when you get the machine. I don't know exactly what they're, what it's precisely like directly out of the factory. And then you have this time setting. They have, uh, depending on if you're doing a single or a double, double I think is kind of a good default. Like I said, you're gonna see how much we make there. If you wanna make a cafe style like third wave style espresso, stick to double. But basically what this is doing is just changing, um, let me see here, switch to the single. It's changing the amount of time, that's it. This is just the amount of time that the grinder grinds for. So um, there's no built-in scale here. And you can't exactly weigh out how much coffee, I mean, I guess you probably could because there is a manual grind setting. So if you wanted to grind uh, 18 grams, you could weigh out 18 grams on a scale, put it in here and then grind that out. It's not exactly how this is built for though. I think the idea is you load this up and then you go through the settings. But um, as you'll see in the advanced stuff, this machine, though it has a lot of automation, can be done totally manually. So that's really fun. Okay, let's get into making a coffee. That's enough talking. I've got the grind on these kind of basic settings. We're just gonna see what that gives us. And then I'm probably gonna make some adjustments from there. So. Um, it's very simple, got the porta filter in here. Uh, there's two ways I can start this. I can hit the grind button. I can also actually push this in. One of the ways to manually grind is push and hold this in, but just as an example. here, so I'm gonna pull this over this way. Okay, so that ground for 16 seconds, and as you can see, um, probably gave us a little bit too much, but what I'm gonna do is just try to tamp all this down and then use the razor tool just to show you that process. So um, here we go. One thing that definitely should be noted is that making espresso is a, is a messy prospect. Uh, this has been the messiest contribution to my coffee making. Uh, and I, this isn't a fault of the machine, it's just a fact of espresso. So keep that in mind. That's why I got things like rags around and uh, why I think 
continually cleaning as you make with this machine is a good idea. Okay, so just gonna tamp that in. I have no idea how much uh, pressure I'm placing on this, but it's a pretty good amount. Um, I really like having this mat, that's a helpful thing. Side note, since I'm doing the tamping right now, never, ever, 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 when you tamp, smack the side of the portafilter. You've probably seen baristas do that, where they'll go tamp, tamp, smack, smack, tamp. Hitting the portafilter after you've tamped causes the puck, which is kind of what you're making here, uh, causes that to break. Uh, and that's how you get channeling and really bad espresso. So just, you don't want to do that, basically. Okay, so um, there's a fair amount of coffee in here. So the, this is where the razor comes into play. So the idea is that this is gonna go on here and make sure that we don't have too much coffee that this can't pull a shot. So now that I've tamped, stand this on here, and actually it's, uh, the level of the coffee is below the, 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 the razor. What they tell you to do actually is turn it sideways and do this so as to knock excess coffee out. I actually do have a couple loose grounds um, just from the sides. So I'm gonna do their process for this. Uh, the first time I did this and keen observers who follow me on Instagram who saw the story when I did this, uh, saw that the first time I used the razor I used it before tamping <laughs> because I was just diving in. I had no idea what this was for, but that's the idea. Yeah, I don't like to read instructions. Go figure. And yeah, just as a, as a note, this is kind of not something you really need to worry about, but just as if you're curious, um, the, the Porta filter, while it fits perfectly in here, um, I, that might show up on the video or not. There's like maybe a millimeter between the sides if I hold this against one side. So when you tamp, you're always gonna have some grounds kind of around the edge. Not really something you need to worry about, like I said. Okay, let me get back into espresso here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the grind settings are always saved. Um, we'll be able to see how that's something you can take advantage of later. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go to the brew uh, so we've tamped, I'm going to put this in, always goes into the side and then you twist it to lock. Um, the machine is quite sturdy. This is a heavy machine, sits well on the counter, but if you're rough with this, you can move it around when you lock in the porta filter. So I always like to kind of hold on to the edge and just do it um, smoothly. No worries. Okay, let's move this out of the way. And now we're gonna make our espresso. So um, the brew aspect of this has basically one setting and that's how long, how long the water brews. That's the only thing you can really control as far as the, the brew goes here. And you have single, double, and then you can select the amount of time as your option. Um, we're making a double here, so let's brew. And you're gonna to get to see that within five seconds, um, or less actually, the water has started to already heat up and it's we're already pulling shots here. I'm holding this up here so as not to create a huge mess because it's kind of splashing. Um, I can tell you from the way this is pulling out that this isn't perfect, but I'm curious to see how it tastes. Uh, you can probably tell from the amount that's pulled here that this is not the kind of espresso you'd find in most third wave um, coffee shops. All right, well, unfortunately, I can't really um, get closer to the camera and show you this, but it's got a pretty good amount of crema. Uh, I mean, I filled this cup mostly to here with this espresso. It's a pretty generous double shot, as they might say. And... It's a little bit on the uh, watery side, but it's got really good flavor. Yeah, I can taste the good citrus and chocolatey. It tastes like the coffee should taste, and that's quite nice. Now, this would be a little bit too much coffee in here to make uh, like a cappuccino with this. So from there, we would do some adjustments. I also, I'd also say that I could get a bit stronger flavor out of, out of this. So. Um, 
what I might be inclined to do is, uh, so I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do anything too advanced here right now. Um, but what I want to do is show you how quickly you can just kind of adjust from the base. So this is like right out of the box, made a pretty good coffee. I think that's pretty awesome. I'm going to make some quick adjustments here to try to bring this a little more in line with what I'd like. I think it needs to be a little bit more concentrated, a little bit more syrupy. Um, and, and so what I'm thinking is uh, I'm just going to go a little bit finer on the grind and see what we end up with. Um, before I do that, I get to show you here very important cleaning aspect of this. Um, so we've just brewed. I want to get this out of here. Uh, one thing to note, so the puck is here. Um, I've noticed sometimes it gets stuck up on there. That's not uncommon with espresso machines, so you just may need to knock it off. Um, I'm going to go dump this. Okay, so I dumped the puck out and now I'm just gonna wipe this down. You could rinse this out, but really if you're gonna make multiple espressos like I am now, that's the best course of action to reduce the uh, moisture that's left in here. One of the challenges is if you, if you get to rinsing this, there's gaps on the inside where water can get trapped. So when you get to actually watching, washing this, it's best to remove the basket, wash it and let it all dry. Okay, and then one more thing, uh, which I can't show you right now, but I'll superimpose a picture, is what this looks like post-brew. Post and since we just brewed, it's actually not that bad. Since we just brewed, I'm just going to give it a wipe down. Uh, one thing you might do, and you'll see that there's grounds on there. So I want to get that a little bit cleaner. And uh, second wipe's much better. i got one more. And yeah, looking pretty good. So um, just want to keep that as clean as possible. All right, so this time around, like I said, I'm going to be um, pulling the espresso a little bit differently. Uh, what I'm gonna do also actually is make a milk drink so I can show you the milk process for this. Um, and before we get into that, I might as well just show you the sort of presets here. So like I said, with the espresso, there's two settings for the grinder. That is how long it grinds and the grind size. For our next experiment, I'm going to take it down significantly and see how that works out. One thing you do when you're when you're adjusting things is to only adjust one thing at a time. So I would not want to adjust the size and the time at the same time. So the only thing you can control with the grind is the time and the size. And with the brew, it's the time. And these presets save various settings. So uh, the Americano is a little bit special. I'll make one of those later on. I want to get to the milk right now. The latte adds the milk component, um, these latte settings. So there's latte, flat white, and cappuccino. And what you control as far as the milk goes is the temperature of the milk and the froth level. So there's the temperature setting and there's the froth level. So those are the two components you control as far as the milk for their for their automatic milking. There actually is a ma way to manually froth if you want to get into that, but I'll show you that in the more advanced overview I do, um, which I'll link below. So I want to make a cappuccino here, and actually 150 is pretty high temperature for milk. There's one thing about this that I wish was a little different is the temp only goes in 10 degree increments. It might be because the temperature sensor uh, is right down here, so it's this little sort of button looking thing. The um, pitcher will, will sit on that. And so I think that having the temperature read through the pitcher makes it a little less precise. 150 is definitely too hot for milk. 140 is still slightly hotter than I'd like. Uh, 130, the milk has a really nice level of sweetness to it, but I wish it was a little warmer, so I wish I could do 135. For froth level, the foam that this makes, that this machine makes on the auto foam, is a really nice sort of paint-like um, microfoam. So you're not going to be getting a really thick, dry foam with this. Maybe if you put the temperature up really high, that's what's going to happen. Uh, but if you do 130, 140, you're going to get a really nice, smooth foam, um, a really sweet milk, so that's pretty good. Like I said, I'm gonna do a cappuccino here, uh, but first we gotta, gotta make the coffee again. So uh, I decided to go down on the grind size. We're gonna see how this turns out. 
Now, one of the reasons you don't want to change time and grind size at the same time here is that going finer is going to make this grind slightly slower. I don't know by how much, but um, just something to note. Also, it's going to be harder to keep track of, of what's affecting what if you do multiple things at once. So, a little tamp. Uh, one thing I always check with my tamp, just a point of interest, uh, I always try to make sure it's as level as possible. Uh, this is one of these variables that you control. If uh, after tamping your your grounds are not level, then the water is going to go to one side or the other, and that's going to lead to channeling. So um, just something to keep in mind when you get into this. Uh, so there we are. Already cleaned this. So let's get you in there. And now, let's see how this does. Uh, I'm just going to do the same double setting. And while I do that, I'm going to pour my milk. I've actually, so I've already set the milk temperature here to 130, which is what I want, and the froth level to 8. I want maximum froth. Uh, but first, we're going to brew. And uh, one thing I do like to observe is how that coffee's coming out. That looks pretty good. I think that the uh, brew time is probably a little bit long. I'm actually just gonna stop it, to be honest. Because I'm gonna try to make a cappuccino in here. There's already way too much liquid that's coffee. But let's see how it tastes. Oh yeah, that's much better. Much more brightness, um, more, uh, more silky. Uh, but there's too much coffee in here. That's funny. It's almost like for what I'm trying to do, the machine really wants a single. Maybe this cup wants a single. Um, what Jesse was noting, if you listen to the podcast, you'll hear this, is that it seems like this machine almost makes a a brewed espresso. Like it's almost a full cup of coffee that's an espresso. What I'm gonna get into in the advanced is making an espresso that's more suitable for something you'd sip in a cup like this. Uh, but like I said, that's gonna be for the advanced. This is still delicious, so. Uh, all right, got the milk. And I put enough in there, one point of interest. Um, so you need to make sure that there's enough milk in here to cover the steam one tip. And that's generally, uh, from what I've found, to be about halfway. That's probably going to end up being too much milk for this. Um, by the way, that's all there is to steaming. Um, so yeah, spoiler alert, I'm not going to be able to pour latte art. I'm not, I'm not good enough to do that just yet. Um, but, uh, be able to make a nice looking cup of coffee anyways, and it's going to taste good. So, uh, like I said, uh, this, this is really fast. Um, I, it's taking me a little bit longer cause I'm talking things out, but as you can see, I just stuck that in there and hit a button and it's steaming for me. Uh, I don't need to do anything. It's gonna make a really nice looking cup of coffee here in just a moment. There we go, temperature's going up. And we've got this going up to 130, so this is gonna be done in just a moment. Now one thing that's really nice about this steam wand, A, the outside doesn't really get hot. So this I can, I can touch actually, um, which is really nice. Still best to, to handle it by here, uh, but I'm gonna be able to wipe this down immediately, which is a good thing. It also will auto purge. Uh, so that's a, that's a really nice feature. All right, so I'm just gonna and uh, I've already been able to wipe that down. And as you can see, it's purging itself. So 
Uh, be very careful. You probably shouldn't do what I'm doing right here because there's very hot water coming out of there, but um, that's that. All right. I wish I could show you this milk. It looks wonderful. Let's see if I can make a... No. I didn't do this right to be able to make any kind of latte art. There's still foam left in here. Hold on one sec. Well, that's really yummy. Okay, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna try to do this old style with, uh, but there's there's the there's the nice foam at the top, right? So that's what I was trying to pour in here, but I didn't uh, portion my stuff properly. So. I'm gonna do this kind of old style uh, cappuccino here. Get some of that foam out. All right, there we go. Cappuccino. And you saw all the moves I did to make that. There weren't many. That's really good. One of the nice things about when you do your temperature, your milk lower, is that the milk is so much sweeter and it plays really well with the coffee. And I can say, even though, as you've seen, the espresso is not really dialing in like a classic sort of uh, third wave style espresso where we're looking at a ratio of uh, one to two. That is you, you put in, if you put in 15 grams of coffee, 15 grams of coffee, you'll be looking for 30 grams of espresso. That's pretty sort of common approach. Even though I'm not doing that, I'm still making a coffee that's better than many places I've been. Um, and that's pretty much right out of the box. That is, that's the cappuccino. Uh, what I'm gonna do is reset this, uh, clean up a little bit, and I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna make a quick Americano to show you what that process is like. And then I'm gonna get into kind of advanced features, uh, making a sort of more advanced cup of coffee using a scale. Uh, and we'll do that in the second clip. Again, these timestamps I'll put at the bottom of the video. So I'm gonna clean and be back and we'll make an Americano. Okay, so uh, we're going to come back really quick. So I took out the portafilter and the puck was left under there. So I can't really show it to you right now. Just to let you know that this happens not infrequently and all you need to do is just tap the side of the puck and then it'll come off. So just uh, make a note of that if you get into brewing with this machine. Okay, we're back to make a quick Americano. And actually, the machine has had some time to go to sleep now, so I can show you uh, how it behaves when you turn it on. So first thing in the morning, after a while, this machine's gonna go to sleep. Uh, and first thing in the morning, you come in and you hit the power button. And it turns on, it does this quick pump, and now you're ready to just dive in and make your coffee. Okay, so we're gonna go into an Americano. Um, I'm just gonna use the same settings for the grind. I actually like the taste of that espresso that came out, so I'm just gonna keep going with it. You might be noticing that grinds are kind of falling everywhere. Again, messy process. When I get into the advanced brewing segment, we'll be using less coffee up front because we'll be targeting something like uh, 15 to 30, 15 grams in, 30 grams out, or 18 grams in, 30 grams out. We'll be going much finer, uh, but we're gonna get into that later. So just doing this like I have been. First thing in the morning, I want an Americano. I don't wanna think about it. I just want to do this process. Just double checking, make sure I did clean that. It's a little awkward from this angle. Okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and brew. What you're gonna notice is that, you remember that water output I mentioned before? Hopefully this will show up, but it's gonna first fill the cup with water. So, and one thing you do wanna note on this is careful how you place your mug. Um, because if you're a little too off, it can get messy. Uh, but when I first got this machine, this is what I was doing quite a bit, was just making Americanos and Americanos. Uh, and part of the reason for that is that I don't do a lot of milk drinks, um, but they are fun and this makes it super easy to do a really good milk drink.
So the kind of default settings, I could have done a larger Americano, um, but I like less water with my Americanos. Um, that filled up to about here. And there we have it. It's a good cup of coffee. What can I say? Very simple. Don't forget, always take care of this right away. I'm just gonna set this over here for now. And wipe this off. All right, so that's how easy it is to dive in and make a good cup of coffee with this machine. Espresso, Americano, I did a cappuccino. Making a latte or a flat white is, is uh, essentially the same approach. Um, the default settings, they've got these three in here. Uh, cappuccino, the froth is at eight. Uh, for a flat white, the froth is at four. And it goes all the way down to one, I believe. So you've got froths of one to eight. So the default for the flat white is four and the default for the latte is five. So play around with it, see, see what you like in your milk foam. I like the cappuccino no matter how much milk I'm using. Sort of a classic cappuccino is about a six ounce cup of coffee. Um, it should be one to two ounces of that as espresso and the rest is milk. Uh, depending on what kind of espresso you're making. And I like good foam. I would use that foam level, honestly, um, uh, oftentimes I'll fill this up and this is eight ounces, I think, and I'll do that foam level. It's not quite classic cappuccino foam, milk foam thickness, but that might be because I'm using a lower temperature. That might be how this machine handles it. Uh, there is a way to manually do the milk. I'm gonna do that in the next segment when I get into some more customization stuff. We'll flip over to that right now and then uh, show you everything you can do customization wise with this machine. Okay, so in this next segment, I'm going to get into uh, making some really fine-tuned, dialed-in espresso um, and some other drinks as well. So before we get into that aspect of things, uh, first of all, I will be using a scale on this, and this is a bit of a new thing. Uh, this is the Motif scale. I'm going to link to them below. It, uh, you'll see it has no displays on it. It goes all through an app. Uh, one of the reasons I've decided to use it is because it fits on here. And that might not be 100% ideal because it's not exactly liquid proof, but it's gonna work and I'm gonna want it. I'm, I, want, I want to use it. So we're gonna try it out and see how it goes. Uh, so a little bit of a side thing there. So like I mentioned before, your customizations on here, like things that you can change with the grinder and, and the espresso are, are almost kind of limited. You can change the grind size and how long it grinds. Um, I'm bringing in the scale because I want to know how much, how much ground coffee is going to the portafilter and how much is coming out into the cup. Uh, because I want to make about 30 grams of espresso to fit into here so we can drink more of a classic espresso drink. And then when we put that in here and make a cappuccino, it's gonna make something much more um, rich and decadent, I think, in terms of the coffee, coffee's flavors. Uh, so before we get into that, you'll, you'll notice we've got all these presets here, right? Well, you can add your own and you can start off with kind of their base of, of what to do. Let's say I wanna make a, a cappuccino. Let's say I'm gonna start off with, uh, by the way, the double setting on here is 30 seconds. So when you tap this to change the, this is the brew time, um, the, the, the double setting that it kind of defaults to is actually 30 seconds. So maybe I wanna start with 25 seconds. Um, I don't want the temperature to be too high. I want it to be 130. I want all that froth, okay, that's good. And then you get to select your own little sort of design to go on top of that, let's do that one. Name, I'll just name it me, why not? I'll call it Joe. All right, so now when I go in here, it's got these settings saved. Um, now the, the settings that really save by the template I found are these, the brew and the milk. The grind, if I change the grind in this one, Say I, let's say I do that, 11 second grind, go into Americano. It saved that 11 seconds. 
And that kind of makes sense. Uh, certainly if you change the grind size, because that's actually a mechanical setting, like this dial over here actually changes the distance of the burrs. So one thing to note, if you're making the, the dial smaller, you're not gonna be able to go past a certain point while there's coffee in here. And unfortunately that's a little bit of a, little bit of a pain. The way to kind of get around that is to dial it down as much as you can and then grind a bit and then dial it down a little bit more. Let me take this back up to 16 because I'm just, A, I'm kind of just trying to show you how this stuff works, but B, I am gonna change that grind size, but I only wanna change one at a time. Okay, let's go back into the custom drink. What I'm doing here is I wanna dial in my espresso for the method that I like. I do want to have less of a brew time. I do want to change the grind size, but as we just saw that, changes for everything. I'm not gonna be steaming milk just yet. Uh, the hot water, by the way, this is something you just activate anytime and it'll output hot water like we saw for the Americano. So if, and I've actually done this a couple of times where I just wanted some hot water right away, I'll put the hot water. Off the top of my head, I don't know what temperature that outputs at, so I'll, I'll overlay it here just to, just to let you know what kind of hot water that gets you. But uh, it's, I've used it for other things, like when I've been cooking and I needed some immediate, clean filtered hot water right away, I've actually used this machine, which is kind of cute, I think. <laughs> so just to give you, you know, one more time, quick overview, that's making your own little presets. So uh, you come up with some settings that you really want, you can set it up yourself. And of course you can go into create your own and, and set all that up. So this is, this would be if you wanted to do um, an Americano. So if you know, like if I wanted to fill up this glass to here, I might um, experiment, figure out how much time it is to do that. And then I would always know how to fill up this glass of an Americano and I could make a custom drink for that. Um, so th different things you can do with this, just fun to play around, um, but that's how you get into it. Since we're on the subject of this menu, here's the settings. Um, so you can kind of change your units. There's the cleaning again. I'm going to be doing the cleaning in a different video. Um, so we're not going to go over that here. Brew temperature settings. You can, uh, you can adjust it if you think that your brewing temperature is not quite right. But I think for most of you out there, leaving it on ideal is going to be perfectly fine. I haven't run into a situation where I've thought that I needed to change the brewing temperature, but you have the ability to do that. Milk temperature, this is like defaults, but again, on each of those settings, you have the ability to change that. Um, like I said, in the setup, you have the opportunity to set your water hardness, um, and it comes with a test strip to do that. Uh, and then that's, that's pretty much it. You can do a factory reset down there. So those are those settings. All right, so enough of the menu. Let's get into making a more, let's, let's call it specialty coffee style espresso. We're gonna try to get 30 grams of delicious espresso into this, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, so like I said, I'm using the, this is the motif scale. And in order to use the motif scale, you have to use the motif app. This is not a review of the motif right now. I'm just showing you what this is all about here. It's called the mentor. So uh, first thing we wanna do is figure out what settings we need as far as the grind goes to get 15 grams of coffee into here. That's what I wanna aim for. That's just what I'm gonna go for. So I've gotta start by sticking this on the scale and tearing it. Now I've already put the grind size down to eight. I want a much finer grind. I know I'm gonna need that. So we're gonna start with uh, the grind size at eight and I'm actually, I'm gonna break my own rules and change two of these things. I'm gonna go down to uh, 14 seconds grind time because I know that 16 is just too much. Uh, but we'll see how this goes. Okay, while I was grinding, I went and I grabbed a plate and a spoon so that I can uh, more easily kind of adjust this. Now, before kind of tamping this out, I wanna see um, how much we ended up with. How many grams? What are we at? So, wow, okay, 15.1. <laughs> I might, I might get, I'm gonna be a little uh, picky on this and go straight to 15. Okay, there we go, 15. I didn't plan that, that's just how it worked out. All right, so 15 grams, and we wanna do 30 grams out. So 
Um, I mean, what we found out here is that 14 seconds at that eight grind size uh, has given us 15 grams of coffee. We have tamped. No need to use the trimmer because we have less coffee in here. We know it's not gonna be too big. Just double checking the cleanliness of that. Okay, now let's get in here. Now I'm not gonna go directly into this. Um, there's a couple things. First off, well actually this is gonna be a little bit different since I have the scale on here, but just for your edification, the, the plate down here makes it difficult to put small cups because there are these two giant holes um, for the for the liquid to come out and not splatter everywhere. So it's a little precarious uh, like this. I've been using I have these kind of smaller cups that that kind of fit there just fine and, and seem to be stable. Um, what I am doing though is using the motif. So I'm gonna go ahead and be daring and see how this works out. I might get my motif really dirty, but let's find out. Okay, so we're gonna tear this. I'm gonna set this at 25 seconds, and then I'm gonna watch my scale. This is roughly set right in the middle. So I'm gonna start the brew, and I'm gonna watch my scale, and as soon as I hit 30 grams, um, or really close to it, I'm gonna stop, and hopefully, uh, hopefully that's going to work out. So let's go. Now what we should notice is that this will take a little bit longer for coffee to start coming out here because it's a much finer grind. Okay, that's looking really good. Okay. Oop. That's... Oop. 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 What did we get up to there? We got up to 35 actually. So, uh, that happened really fast. That's actually really good. That's actually really good. Mm. What am I tasting though? Because it's not perfect. Um, hmm. I feel like I feel like it's coming off a little sour, uh, which to me suggests that. Um, I need to go a little bit finer. Like sour kind of suggests over extraction um, and, uh, and I think I need to go a little bit finer with it. But actually it's really close. It's really close. Uh, but that's what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go down one notch. Seven, seven in grind size. I'm gonna reset here um, and come back in just a moment and then we're gonna try it again. Uh, all right, so point of interest, when I get to it, I did not need the 25 seconds to brew, so I'm going to be adjusting that. Um, okay, so doing this again, let's tear this out. I'm worried that because we're at 8 and 14 seconds before, we're almost 15 grams spot on, I might not get enough out this time, um, but let's see what happens. So we're at 7 and 14. All right, let's see where we end up. Yeah, 14.7. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna run with it, 14.7, and I'm gonna go for uh, 29 and a half grams, 30 grams, we'll see what happens. Um, if I'm liking this result better, it might, need, might mean I wanna go up a second more, but we wanna do one thing at a time here, so. that tamp in there, put this down to 20 seconds. Um, it should be noted that the lowest you can go is actually 16 on the brew time, but as you saw, you can stop it. So uh, one point of interest, when you're adjusting, don't hit this to make your settings. You always wanna hit this button here. So it says custom right now, that's what we're in. I set it to 20. Now that reads 20 seconds. If you're in this setting and you set your time and then hit that, it's gonna immediately start brewing. So 
Um, just keep that in mind. All right, here we go. So that's in there. I'm gonna set up. I'm keeping this clean. Hey, like I said, it's a good idea to keep this stuff clean. Um, messy process making espresso, but B also the mentor is not really made to get super wet. So uh, be careful with that. Okay, let me get that situated. Zero out my scale. I'm on 20 and now um, I'm gonna watch my scale here while I brew so I can figure out what my time is closer to the actual time. Okay, I got it set to 20 seconds. We'll see how close we get. And, oh yeah, that looks good. Six, seven, two, eight, two, nine. Yeah, it was more like 15 seconds. And I went, I still went over about 35. But that's okay. We'll see how we see how we taste. Really hard to control that, but um, this looks good. It smells good. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That made all the difference in the world. Just going down that one grind size. Um, now this is really good. This is a really good tasting uh, espresso. Um, I'm gonna kind of cheat here and try to make this into a cappuccino really quick. Now what I can't show you here is before, if you recall, when I did the espresso poll, the espresso was going up to like about here. Uh, now we're all the way down here, so I have much more room for milk in this one. I'm gonna grab my milk really quick. Okay. So, uh, there, are no, there aren't any lines on the inside of this, but one guideline I use is I try to go to the bottom of the, this sort of, this sort of lip here starts right about there. So I at very least try to make my milk go there. Uh, this is probably still gonna be too much for this, but you have to go, you have to go at least to just before that point for the steam one to be fully submerged. All right, I've already get the, got the milk set. Remember, this is under my custom, this is the Joe cup of coffee. So 130 degrees, froth of eight. Milk is gonna go. And while that's going, you'll recall I told you that it's possible to, um, to manually steam the milk. And I'm gonna show you how to do that after I do this. Uh, and the reason, reason I'm not doing it on this one is A, I don't, I don't think I have the expertise and knowledge to properly manually steam milk well. That's a, that's a challenge. <laughs> that is a challenge. Um, I also don't see a reason to do it. Like, for me, I get everything I need by letting this machine do the work. Uh, that steam wand is fantastic. Uh, as you can see, all I, all I need to do is pour the milk and turn it on. Um, so we're gonna let that finish and then I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to pour some some latte art. Uh, and I'm gonna try to do that actually by by pouring out some of the liquid that's in here. Because there's too much liquid in here to fit in this. So, um, let me just give this a wipe down. While this wipes down really cleanly, it'll still be a good idea on like a weekly basis to give this a wash. Okay, so I've got, um, Really nice looking foam on the top here. Now at the beginning of the pour, that foam's just gonna sit on top. So this is like pouring liquid from underneath it. Um, it is pouring some of the foam, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Um, I'm trying to guess how much I need for my... Okay, I'm hoping this will do well. Let me see, let me see if I can pour something. This is, uh, 
this is history here. I've never poured or tried to pour latte art on a video before. Uh, no, I'm not going to be able to do it. There's no way. There's no way. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, my goodness. It's um, a ghost. I, I know that's not coming out on the on the camera, but um, it's that it's that last little bit at the end there when you're tilting. There's this like uh, foam sitting on top that maybe I can see that nice nice thickness. That's what you want to kind of get at the top there. So um, my technique uh, needs a little work, but you know it's fun to do. Oh yeah, ooh, mm. that's so much better than the like that. The other one I made was good, but this is so much better. I kind of did leave some of the foam in there. Uh, actually, that's kind of cool. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up, but you can kind of, or at least I can see the delineation between um, the milk and the foam at the top. Maybe we can pick some of that up here. Really nice foam. Look at that. That's how, that's how foam should behave. Like, this is really hard to do manually, uh, and this machine just does it for you, um, so. That's pretty cool. All right, so there we have it. That was, uh, I mean, you saw the processes I went through there to essentially start from out of the box. I make a good cup of coffee right away. And then I did some dialing in. I used a scale uh, and made a really good specialty grade, specialty quality uh, cafe espresso, um, the kind where you would get in here or, you know, make a really good cappuccino with. So, uh, and it didn't take me that many steps. Uh, I didn't edit any of that out. It just, that's how, that's how we came to it. Um, really good process, easy to kind of almost, you can almost go full manual with this machine. Um, and just to, just to reiterate, this is, this is the, uh, the drink that I saved. So I can go in the morning now and make exactly what I just made, just with a few pushes of the button if I want. Um, can also, of course, get really into it. Uh, now before I go completely, I wanna show you the manual milk steaming. Like I said before, uh, this machine steams the milk so well, I don't know why you would want to do it manually, uh, but I mean, that's not true. I know doing the whole process manually can be really rewarding, so you may wanna get into that. I personally uh, probably will never use this, um, except maybe out of curiosity. But for the most part, it, it does such a good job on its own that I don't see a reason to. So the way this works is you start by lifting the steam wand out, and then you need to hold, you know, hold the pitcher in here and make sure that like I said before, make sure that tip is covered. And now we wanna to go to, let's say you're steaming the milk here, and you'll notice that this changes to manual. While this is out, it gives you this manual option. So we're just gonna hit manual and froth. And this is kind of, this is kind of how it works. It will only stop when you tell it to stop but some of the benefits might include being able to get a sort of vortex going. But see, now I have no idea when to stop this. Like, I don't know what, what hot milk feels like or what it's supposed to look like. Like, I stopped there, but that's not anywhere near as steamed. Anyways, that's that is the uh, that's the manual method. It'll still auto purge for you, which is really nice. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that so that you could see um, that for all purposes, this machine it can be almost entirely manually done. And, uh, and that's even to the point where you can adjust the temperature of the brew. Not precisely, keep in mind, but you can make adjustments if you like to tinker around with that kind of thing. So ideal being the default. Uh, like I said, I have really enjoyed the results from that. And I'm, I'm brewing with you know light roasted coffees here. So a reason to go higher would be if you had something really light and fruity, 
um, and maybe you weren't quite getting what you wanted out of that. Maybe the temp needs to be nudged up a little bit. I think for the most part, most people brewing on this are not gonna need to use that. So that has been the Breville Barista Touch. Uh, I know this video is really long. Uh, hopefully I was able to share with you everything that's really possible. Uh, I think it's it's a really good machine. Um, the, the retail price on it is 1200. Even at that price, uh, I think this is, this is like an amazing deal for a home espresso machine. Cause it's not just an espresso machine, it's a grinder and you're getting really high quality versions of both. I think, I think you'd be hard pressed to equate to this quality, um, getting separate machines and spending uh, less or much less than that. Uh, I think in order to do that, you'd have to get into used machines uh, and then you'd have to be really familiar with uh, care and maintenance of manual espresso machines. Uh, for most home brewers, I think this machine is really spot on uh, and it's gonna be really hard to do better than this. I mean, I sound like, I sound like a fanboy, but I really am impressed. The, the experience that you saw in the video today has been my experience with the machine where I set it up and immediately I was making pretty good coffee. And then with just some slight adjustments, uh, really dialing it in super well. If you have any questions um, about the machine, about espresso, uh, please do leave them below in the comments. I, I will almost certainly be doing some kind of follow-up video. Like I said, I'll be doing cleaning in another video, uh, cleaning and maintenance of the machine, including cleaning of the grinder, descaling, all that kind of thing, uh, and how that process works. But that really needs to be in a separate video. Um, so, you have any, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. Always happy to talk coffee, espresso, that sort of thing. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.